All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome back, I should say. Uh, my name is Pete Monroe. I'm the director of media with True Kids One. And today we're going to be talking about uh, video file sizing, exporting, and uploading. Um, this is uh, this is actually like a really good kind of granular thing to talk about because um, you know all any videos you are going to produce, it's almost like they don't exist without an audience. So in order to get it to your audience, you need to make sure that you have some kind of understanding of, uh, you know, what you're dealing with in terms of the file and the sizes. Um, and, um, you know, Adon, let me know if you have anything specific that you want me to demonstrate or anything. I know this was, um, this workshop was kind of your suggestion. Um, so if there's anything specific, just let me know. Okay. Yeah, and Pete, just to give a little context, Sarah's here. Hi, Sarah. Um, Sarah works in our office, and she uh, often has to upload videos to our website. And there's a file size restriction, so um, we've been. I we don't have uh, full access for everyone to, to the Adobe Suite yet, uh, mm -hmm. but we had a meeting on that today, and we, we should have it by Monday. So she she'll be able to get into uh, Premiere and do some of this in Premiere. But I was using a. Um, um, an open source software called Handbrake that was really convenient actually, but it's it's kind of clumsy, um, real crude controls. And uh, so so she'd send me the link. I'd I'd download it. I'd process it through Handbrake. I'd I'd drop the resolution and drop the frame rate because most of our mm -hmm. stuff is, you know, just a talking head. So it, we don't need a lot of uh, resolution or high frame rates. And we we'd get the file size down. I'd, I'd re-upload it. Um, mm -hmm. but now that she has access to premiere, it, it'll be nice. Cause she'll be able to just get in there and do it. directly. Yeah. What was the, what was the, um, what was the file size restriction? Like what was the limit? It's, you know? it's 250, um, megs. Megabytes. megabytes. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's not a lot for your website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, 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 we use a, a service and they, they restrict it to 250 megabytes. Huh. We, we now have a, a YouTube channel that we're using. So that gets really, uh, that's what I was going to say is if you embed, embed in YouTube, um, embed YouTube videos, uh, or what would be better actually, in my opinion, well, YouTube is great. Don't get me wrong. Um, Vimeo is the other option that, uh, you know, tends to look a little bit cleaner. You're not getting, ads unwanted ads oh, yeah. um i mean i haven't i haven't like i use it on my website on my personal um website um and uh yeah i mean it's it's i just like it i like the look of it a little bit more but that said youtube is it's just universal and you can right. you can click on the the thing that you can do on youtube what's that's well i guess you can do this with both but um, yeah, I don't know. YouTube is just YouTube and it's just the dominant. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, um, well, yeah, that's great. Cause I actually have handbrake open. Um, and oh, really? yeah, yeah, I mean it, yeah. I mean, I figure, you know, cause that's one of the things that's, you know, there's, there's handbrake and there's also VLC. Um, the thing that I was actually trying to look up was how, how do I find out what the file size is going to be? And I couldn't really figure that out on Handbrake. Um, I wish I, I had more seen time. That either. I, I I would just take a stab at it. And, and I it yeah. Out, I, I I Googled it, and it there seemed to be something you can check to like preview the file size, the file file size. But then I didn't see it in any of the preferences on Handbrake. Um, one of the good things about Media Encoder on Adobe Premiere. Uh, uh, I should say, for those who don't know, Media Encoder is the exporting program that's associated with Premiere. You can export straight from Premiere, and that will give you uh, a, a estimated file size, which is not, it's almost never accurate, but it's like close-ish. Um, so you can do that in Premiere, but sometimes what's really great and this is something that they did adobe did this a, a while ago they they made it so that 
Adobe Media Encoder, you could you could export from Adobe to Media Encoder and you could be exporting a timeline, like you could be creating the video in Media Encoder and then you can keep working in Premiere. That ability to keep working is huge, huge. I cannot tell you because if I'm editing a video in Adobe Premiere um, and I want to export something, if I can't use Adobe Premiere, like, and I'm exporting something, that export, at least, you know, uh, when you're working on a slower computer than the one I have, that could take, sometimes that'll take hours. So like, I can't keep editing. So now Media Encoder, the way that it is now, I can send the file to Media Encoder. Media Encoder's only job is to export it. Meanwhile, I can keep doing things in Premiere. So that's a big, Media Encoder is definitely the way to go. And 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 just like Adobe Premiere, it, it gives you an estimate of the file size and you can kind of try out all the different uh, resolutions and things like that and formats to see, you know, you, so that you can actually get the file size you want. but. Um, anyway, um, okay, let's uh, dive in here. Um, no screen share, share sound. I guess I can't optimize for video, but that's okay because I don't really have. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, my name is Pete Monroe. I'm the Director of Media with True Kids One. Oh, interesting. Uh, our mission is to ins inspire K through 12 students to create, communicate, and collaborate in the digital age. Uh, we have in school, after school, and out of school programs. We try to basically give kids resources and tools to learn photography, video production, um, editing, animation, all kinds of things, which um, is uh, desperately needed in New Mexico, and that's why we're here right now. Um, so today we're talking about file sizing, exporting, and uploading. Um, and the this is actually a slide. I have a few slides from one of our other, uh, one of my other uh, TechBit sessions, which is on resolution and file types. And there's obviously crossover. So really quick, just as a basic understanding, like, the larger the image you have, the larger the file size. So, you know, you'll see that on a lot of the um, services that I'm going to talk about, namely YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, um, 1080p is really what you're looking for. Uh, that's full HD, 1080p. Um, and I think that is partially because... 4K is, you know, it's it's got amazing detail, but on a phone screen and often even on a computer screen, it's actually really difficult to tell the difference. You're going to start telling the difference when you start watching on a TV or projecting in a theater. Um, and even then, 1080, I've seen 1080 and projected in a movie theater. And I mean, it looks really good. You know, so this is something that, you know, basic understanding of what you're going to be doing. You're taking a video, so you got to make sure that your canvas size is 1080, 1080p. Um, and then this is just another kind of cross section with some of the dimensions. So you're looking for 1080p, aka true HD or full HD or 1920 by 1080. And the other thing that we want to consider is frame rate. Um, you know, most of the time, this really won't matter. Uh, I don't think that there's really going to be a major difference between 24 and 30 frames per second. 24 is going to give you more of a cinematic look. 30 frames per second is going to be more Instagram, YouTube, online stuff. You can definitely still upload 24 frames per second to YouTube and Facebook and places like that. Um, but there might even be, I'm I, I'm not quite sure, but there might be like some kind of auto conversion where they, like they it it gets converted automatically, because every time you upload to 
to um, YouTube or Facebook, there's a conversion happening. Um, I'm pretty sure YouTube does 24 frames per second, uh, but I'm not sure, quite sure about Facebook. So uh, 60 frames per second, you know, if you keep it, your timeline when you're editing in 60 frames per second, if you're editing in 60 frames per second, then, and you export in 60 frames per second, that probably will affect your file size uh, because you're dealing with twice the amount of frames per second. So um, slow motion, I really wouldn't worry about because these frame rates, the whole, you're not almost never, are you going to be shooting something in 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second and editing in a timeline that has that kind of frame rate? The reason we shoot in these speeds, in these frame rates, is precisely to slow them down. So, like, I'm slowing 120 frames per second down to to 20% speed so that I can play it at 24 frames per second. So when I do that, um, I'm getting this slow motion effect. So I really wouldn't worry about those. And then the other thing are those file types. Um, you know, honestly, like, I really don't concern myself too much with anything other than MP4 <laughs> these days. Uh, this link right here. And actually, you know, uh, Don, it occurred to me that I should export uh, these these slides as PDFs. I don't know if there's a way to um, to connect like or somehow link the the Zoom recording session with uh, a PDF of these slides, but it, it would probably be helpful. Um, or maybe we can put it in the chat. We can save it in the chat. I'm not sure if that works like that. But anyway, um so to the um to the video what's that if you send them to me i'll try to connect them to the video when we when we upload them awesome great so these are your video file types um this is also from my other uh uh slide series this is very important um this link here gives us the breakdown of when and why we use all of these different formats. Um, but to be totally honest, like MP4 is pretty much understood to be the universal, universally most usable, most common uh, file type. Um, MOV is probably comes in second place. And I would imagine WMV and maybe AVI. I don't know. The rest, I really, I just don't even care. AVC HD is, it's like not even one movie. It's like a group of movies, uh, a group of clips. This is, I've seen on camera, like sometimes when I would film on a camera, it would record in this format. And then I would put it on my computer and AVC HD, like, it's basically one file that contains all of the movie clips. And then I just end up converting them to MOV or MP4 anyway. Um, so, you know, really what we need to worry about is MP4 um, and MOV is fine as well. But as far as I know, whenever you're like outputting this stuff and you're exporting and you're uploading to Facebook or Instagram uh, or YouTube, MP4 is what you're looking for. So again, I was saying, uh, setting your canvas size in your editor is crucial to like your file size. Um, now, I don't know why anybody would be using 720p these days. Uh, it's really not a big difference between 1080 and 720, as we can see if I go back here, like, um, you know, I mean, there it's it's really not uh i don't know is that accurate these two look a lot closer than these two <laughs> i don't know which one is more accurate but um i don't know anybody using 720p it feels like it's going out of style 
I mean, there are can I mean, I don't know. I also likewise don't know anybody using 8K. Um, I, there are a lot of cameras, however, that are 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 coming out that are able to shoot 8K. Um, but the file sizes, as you can see over here, one hour of video for 8K is absolutely gigantic. Um, like you need one SD card, you know, one 64 gig SD card for sure, at least to get an hour's worth of video versus when I'm shooting 4K, that's still big. And I shoot all of my video in 4K. It's still very big. But then as you can see, I mean, you're just saving tons and tons of space by shooting in 1080. Um, but again, I'm, sh I'm shooting 4K because we're shooting professional. We're striving for professionalism. But if, you know, and, and, and if, and again, if, if I knew that all of our stuff would only go online, I wouldn't really care that much, but we have events, we project, we show it on a big screen, um, you know, and there, there is a resolution difference for sure. Like there is, there's a detail difference, I should say between 1080p and 4k. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, if I think I said this last time, if you can afford the laptop that can handle 4K because you need two very different laptops or computers to do 1080 versus 4K. Like I have a 30, I have a, a MacBook Pro uh, with 32 gigs of RAM. And that's because I'm editing in 4K all the time. If I had a computer with 16 gigs of RAM, which I, I did for a while, you can edit in 4K, but it ain't easy. It's choppy. Like the playback is choppy versus if you're shooting in 1080, it's a heck of a lot easier. And that is because the computer is reading this file size versus this file size, you know? And it's not that every, every clip I have is uh, an hour long, you know, it's probably going to be more like, 10 or 20 seconds long. <clears throat> so it's not going to matter that much, but that said, if you're if you're interested in doing long form interviews, then you will need then that then your videos will get longer. We shoot long interviews all the time. We shoot we sit down with people and I have two cameras running for a half hour and I then those those files are like 10 gigs in size and i need to import those into the program and adobe is like reading this giant 10 gig file versus a uh you know a 500 megabyte file if it was in 1080 um and so again i uh you know like i said 1080 is ideal for most of you out there um 4k is better if you can handle it if you're going for something more professional um but i wouldn't go below 1080 just saying. Um, okay, so just to just to touch on this right now, um, I wanted to, you know, we're not going to do a deep dive into video editing because this is not what that's about. <clears throat> but I just wanted to make everybody aware of some free or low cost video editors. Uh, I just stumbled upon this one the other day, uh, ClipChamp. Um, you know, if you click on pricing, uh, you're, you're looking at $12 a month, right? Yeah. $12 a month or $10 a month. If you go for yearly, the reason I put this as the first one, because I, I personally, I, you know, I haven't seen this. Um, we did mobile video editing last night and, um, you'll notice that a lot of these free video editors, uh, they have watermarks. And I mean, this says unlimited watermark free exports. That's awesome. Um, so this is a truly free video editing program. Uh, so I think that that's pretty awesome. I'm wondering if one day they will not be free. <laughs> so I would get it while the getting's good. Um, I know that there have been others in the past, but like last night, I 
just started tinkering around in this and I uploaded uh, some videos that I shot recently. Um, so this is the general layout of ClipChamp um, and it's, you know, pretty straightforward. Uh, So, you know, you, it's really just a matter of dragging your clips in and, you know, like all the other video editors, it's it's pretty intuitive. Um, you can make cuts, you can uh, do all kinds of things that I'm not going to get into just yet. Um, the main thing is that, you know, I wanted to export some stuff. So, um, and actually, I think these MOV files are these mov files might be actually 120 frames per second um let me see if i can audio mute yeah that's slow-mo that's not how a basketball really moves so um i think i shot some stuff here in slow-mo which is good <clears throat> and also you can tell because there's a flickering uh and and also i'm i'm also well aware that this uh that the camera that i shot this with um is it shoots the slow-mo in MOV and the regular speed files in MP4. Um, now let me see if I can slow this down, see what happens. Now I'll be able to tell if it's, if it's even a higher frame rate. Yeah, that's not bad, actually. That's pretty smooth. So anyways, um, so for example, in this program, we go to export video quality, your video will exceed, this is what I mean, MP4. It's like, they don't even give you the option here, right? So I just click that and it exports it and I can rename this basketball madness. And I can save to my Google drive. I can do all these things. <clears throat> And then it just automatically downloads. And we have, and that's super tiny because it's not very long, but. Oh yeah, I could have slowed this down. That's weird because in the playback, it looked normal. And then I could even slow it down more probably. So that's one video editor. Uh, and there's not really a lot to discuss in terms of the editing or the exporting because I mean, that's it um if what's kind of cool about this is if you can if you want you can export it as a gif uh and for those of you who don't know what a gif is um it's i guess you know it's like if you ever like share um share gifs on your phone it's just it's just a very small image sequence basically that you can share it's more, it's more shareable essentially in it and it automatically loops by nature it just automatically loops so so that's clip champ and this is one i encourage for people called power director um this one is really nice uh it's free and i think there is i mean it's but again it's with a watermark and let me go find it here. There it is. <clears throat> um, part of the reason I actually even started using um, PowerDirector is because I was trying to teach kids how to edit and and our, we were having a lot of issues with Adobe and this is free. It's on every single platform uh mac pc uh etc cetera, etc cetera. and 
uh, if you want to buy it, it really is not very expensive. Um, let's see. I want to say it's like, yeah, 433 a month. It's, it's, it's pretty reasonable. Like if you like it, you know, um, you could pay $52 for the year and not break the bank and you get a pretty decent, um, you get a pretty decent video editor. Uh, so with this one, all you're doing is, you know, like, like a lot of them, you're just, oh, getting the spinny wheel. That's not good. <clears throat> My computer has been doing a lot today. I might need to quit this program and reopen it. All right, let's try to, this is, this is actually, let's make this a teaching moment. Um, I'm going to go to my finder and I'm going to go to force quit. And sure enough, power director is not responding. Let's reopen it. Oops. There's also, what's really cool about this program is that um there's i don't know there's just a lot of like it's like it has built-in background music uh there's sound effects text uh these are transitions it has all these built-in transitions uh they have like little special effects that you can add in um there's these are like little floating bubble things uh there's just just some nice basic stuff that you can do with it. Um, let's try to import these again. So then, yeah, I'm just dragging my videos in here. And the other thing I like about this is like, I can space them out without having them automatically cinch together. Uh, and that's what a lot of that's like what all of the mobile editing apps do is you don't have the ability to like move the, move the video wherever you want. You know, you, it's like, they, they kind of just make it stick together, which is a little irritating for me. Um, so anyway, um, you can, uh, you can do masking, you can, you can crop, you can zoom, you can change the video speed. You can do the video in reverse. You can, you can do blending modes. Um, and to me, actually, I mentioned this yesterday on uh, the mobile editing work workshop is the, whenever I see blending modes, that to me is the sign of a good video editor. Um, that really is, uh, that's really where it's at for sure. So, um, and what that does is it just allows you to, um, you know, just to mix your images a little more so that you have more control and you can create some really dynamic uh, looking stuff, you know? Um, so anyways, uh, this is Power Director, and I want to now export. So on in, in Power Director, I go to Produce and this one gives me a choice. Select a file format. Profile analyzer. I don't know what that does. Let's click it. <laughs> choose, it's designed to choose you help help you choose the video profile that produces a file with the best video output quite quality possible and saves you production time. Huh. No SRT profile. Okay. Well, I don't know what that does. Anyway, so H264 ABC H. I don't need, I honestly. So did I add, I think I, let's see if I added this to my, um, to my timeline, because I don't remember, or to my slideshow. Was this file type here? Yeah, I guess this is kind of like that ABCHD. Um, I, I, oh no, it says MP4. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. Hmm. I'm not terribly familiar with this. I think this is more the encoder. If you look at how it says, H.264, H.265, 
Um, but we'll just do H264. Um, I'm still learning about H265. I'm not quite sure why it's around or why people are using it, but this gives you the option file extension. You can do uh, MKV, MP4, or M2TS, which is a little strange. I really don't ever see that. I didn't even put it in my slides. So we'll stick to MP4. Um, I don't know about the profile type, profile name, quality. So this gives you all of these choices. Um, again, we want at least 1080. I think YouTube and Facebook both encourage 1080. So we'll do 1080, 24. And, and also it tells you megabits per second. So, uh, you know, 16, that's not bad. Um, and this actually does do 4K and you can create a new, you can custom make a profile and things like that. You can even change the, uh, like the, the region. Uh, fast video rendering, all this, blah, 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 and start. So now it's, for some reason, this decided to call exporting producing. I haven't really seen that too much, but uh, so be it. <clears throat> okay. Um, so as I said, PowerDirector does give us this really, really, really awful watermark. Open file location. So there it is. So there's our file. It's about 90 megabits, which sounds about right. And you can also, you can actually change the location of where it goes. So that is PowerDirector. Now I don't want to save. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Uh, yesterday I went over CapCut for mobile. Now CapCut for desktop, there is also that. So, um, so let's check that out. I think I downloaded, I hope I downloaded it yesterday. Or did I? There it is. Okay, so I've never really used this one, um, so I won't be as familiar. Turn on free layer to modify the relationship between tracks by changing the track position. Okay, good to know. Uh, let's see, let's import some, some video. In the tree lighting ceremony. Let's pick some different video because I'm bored of it. Um, okay. So I think if I if I just press this plus button, it gets added to the track down here. Okay, so that audio is way too loud. So let's change that. And I bet. So I'm just dragging this line down, but I bet that there's a way to separate audio. Thank you very much. And actually, if I select all of these, can I shift click? No? Dang. So this is something like in Adobe where it's like, if I want to select all of them, actually, there we go. You can't shift click. You have to drag over all of them. And then I can right click and separate audio. And then I can select all of these and delete it. So now I have nice audio less video. And as in the uh, the app on your phone, there's all this very similar layout, which makes sense. You can rotate the video, you can make splits, you can drag the end of the clip like that. Um, you can do audio stuff, you can add text, effects. This is really, this is really the same. Um, and there's even auto captions 
uh, because captioning is like extremely popular on social media and stuff. You know, even though I can hear this person talking, we see the words that they're saying. So a lot of people use that. Uh, you can add stickers, other effects, transitions, and things like that. Uh, filters, adjustments, custom adjustment. Ah, okay. So I, I added a custom adjustment. This is very unusual. This is not how I'm very used to Premiere Pro. So when I add an adjustment layer, uh, this is kind of cool. A LUT. What does a LUT stand for? I'm going to search that really quick because I want to know. What is a LUT? I've actually been wanting to know this. A lookup table. That's what it is. A lookup table is... It's like a color grade. It's like a preloaded color grade to your video. So that's what a LUT is, a lookup table. Um, so you can actually have preloaded LUTs, which is kind of cool. That's like pretty advanced, actually, I would say. Um, and But anyway, to this adjustment layer, I can add all these different uh, I can do all the kind of crazy adjustments that I can do. Uh, but again, what we want to focus on, I'm going to get too off topic here. Um, export. Let's, let's see what CapCut does for us. So I'm going to rename it Christmas time. I can export to a specific file location. Good stuff. Video exporting. Yes, I do want video exporting. Thank you. Resolution. So again, 480, 720, 1080, 2K or 4K, I want 1080. Bit rate. Uh, so this is something to note. Bit rate is going to be like the higher the bit rate. See, like you can customize it. The higher the bit rate, the higher the file size, right? Um, codec, again, that's pretty sweet that you can change the codec. Um, Apple ProRes, I believe is better for editing. Like if I was going to take whatever I'm doing in this and edit it on my computer, then I would maybe want Apple ProRes. Um, the most common compression method versus the efficient compression saving space. Um, so H.264 is mostly fine. Frame rate, I can change the frame rate um, and actually we'll keep it the same frame rate that we shot it in. It's important to be aware of your frame rate. We, I, I already know that we shot this in 24, so uh, I don't need a cover. Uh, there is no audio to export, and now we're gonna export. And we'll see how fast this goes. Um, and then this actually gives us right here an estimated file size, which is kind of interesting because it's like a little late. Um, I also don't know where that went. Uh, I almost did it to my desktop. So it went to Pete Monroe movies, CapCut. Okay, that's what I thought. Let's go find it. Um, movies, CapCut. There we go. So most of this footage is actually going to be downgraded because we shot this in 4K. And you can see right here, the dimensions are 1920 by 1080. So this is a 150 megabit clip. Um, so that's CapCut. Um, there's also Filmora, um, Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is free. I haven't really had too much experience with it. Um, but I'm not going to, there's links to this as well. Like I, I just made those links so that you can, um, you know, check it out. If you want to, you can do a little trial and see if it's the right uh, program for you. Um, okay. So there's kind of a lot to cover in the next 15 minutes. Um, so some things that I thought people would want to know, uh, you know, is like, what are the limits? What are the limits of the file size and um, and the length? 
So it turns out for YouTube, this is taken straight from uh, YouTube. Um, normally, uh, normally your videos cannot be more than 15 minutes long. Um, but if you verify your account, which I guess you can do with this link, this, this link takes you there. Okay. Um, so you can verify your Google account and then you can upload a maximum file size of 256 gigabytes or 12 hours. So you can do 12 hour videos on, on YouTube. Um, so that's YouTube. And then Facebook, again, I have a link here. Um, it, they don't even tell you the file types. Um, but again, they're recommending MP4. Uh, they're saying resolution should be 1080p or less. Um, I found that to be a little surprising because I'm not quite sure why they wouldn't want to do 4K. But, you know, maybe it's because Facebook is a social media thing not like youtube is strictly video right um i mean there's 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 a video element to facebook and there's a social element to youtube but they each are designed originally with specific things in mind um facebook supports up to 10 gigs there may be longer times associated when uh you're trying to upload something that big and the videos can be 240 minutes long so, and the longer the video, obviously the the larger the file size. Um, I really wouldn't worry about audio compression. Um, this is just the recommendation that they're making. Uh, Instagram, uh, Instagram, you know, obviously you're not gonna be doing something super long on Instagram. Uh, it's telling us that the maximum file size for videos that are 10 minutes or less is 650 megabits the maximum video maximum file size for videos up to 60 minutes is 3.6 gigs i don't know anybody who's watching 60 minute videos on instagram but i guess you can do that <laughs> um i know that instagram has like you know reels they had like instagram tv and i think they made they turned that into instagram reels because that's what everybody's doing um yeah, so they're, then they're suggesting a minimum frame rate of 30 frames per second and minimum resolution of 720, 720. Uh, so it sounds like if you have something that is 24 frames per second, you might want to export it at 30 frames per second, okay? Um, and then I really wouldn't worry about the aspect ratio. Uh, obviously, it's vertical, but there are programs there, there are um, there are ways to easy ways to fit a video that's 16, uh, 16, nine, like this is these are both vertical. And if you have something that's horizontal, you can make it fit on Instagram. Um, and again, there's a link here to the Instagram help page. Uh, here are some free online compressors that I found. Um, one gig seems to be pretty decent size. Um, you know, I don't know that anybody's going to need to compress something that is less than it, like the max file size you can upload here. Um, so this is something where it's like, you know, I don't know, I, honestly, I'm not quite sure, you know, um, I, I think this is just a way to kind of get people roped into paying for it. Uh, especially cause like this one, it's nice that it's free. Um, but I don't know, there's a 24 hour pass. You could change the file, set, the limit there, but it's like you're paying 40 bucks for a one-time thing um, or yeah, I don't, this to me doesn't seem worth it. Um, and I can tell you why after I'm done showing you the other ones. But if you have something that's like 900 megabytes or something and you wanna make it smaller, um, you know, both of these are a good way to do that. You know, if you like, and, and maybe it's because you, you know, you have a really long video or something or a long video that's like 900 megabits. Um, you know, I feel like most of the time it's a lot longer, uh, but you can compress them using these. There's also 
um, VLC and Handbrake, as uh, we discussed, with links to the download page here. So um, I actually had Handbrake open, um, and this is what Adon brought up uh, earlier in at the beginning of the session. So you basically, this is Handbrake. You can get it for both Windows and Mac. Um, you you choose a file. Okay, so. Um, this is our future of water video. It features a bunch of interviews and B-roll and blah, 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 blah. It's 10 minutes long. And you can see right here, it's 5.7 gigs. That's kind of sizable. And the dimensions, 3840 by 2160, which is also known as 4K. So that's a pretty big file. Let's say I wanted to get it on my phone and text it to somebody. Well, or, you know, if you have a website that has uh, limited, uh, you know, uh, uploads. So I can open my source. You can also, I think, create chapters here. Uh, I mean, Handbrake is not bad, but it's, yeah, it's it's free. So, you know, you get what you pay for. Um, so right here in the presets, you can choose um, different, all those different uh frame rates and resolutions. Now you'll notice that there is no 4K anywhere to be seen here. Um, I would do fast if I'm in a hurry uh, and HQ if I'm interested in doing, or super HQ if I'm interested in doing, if I want to, you know, convert something at like the highest quality possible, um, I would, I would choose at least HQ, um, you know, and, and actually what's cool about this is like, you can actually take old DVDs and you can plug a DVD player. If you have like a, a disc drive still, you can rip DVDs with this. You can burn DVDs, um, because I know that it's, you know, it's obviously getting harder and harder to use DVDs. So you choose your format. This one gives you these three. I'm gonna stick with MP4 because it's the most common. Uh, I can choose web optimized. I'm not quite sure what that does, but if it's going on the web, or maybe I don't need it. Maybe I don't need it. They're, and they also have like these preloaded, you know, Vimeo and YouTube. So Vimeo and YouTube, they do have a 4K setting. So that's good. Um, and then they even have production max. Uh, so in it, and you can see the little box that pops up here. It tells you exactly what it's for. So uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, I can change the title here. I can change the location right here. And I've already exported this. And actually, I was kind of shocked. This did not take very long. Um, so I'm just going to show you where it went. Users, Peter Monroe, movies. right here. So uh, here is this video. And as you can see, climate change is impact. I'm just going to mute it. So, I mean, this is, this is looking pretty good. If you ask me. Um, so we have a 10 minute video that is only 667 megabits. So if you remember the original went, the original, let's go find the original was on my desktop. Um, this was 5.7 gigs. So that's pretty good. Nine, so, but just keep in mind that, you know, this is gonna be a smaller, like, let's look at the original. In fact, let's do this. I'm gonna open this in VLC player. Or not, let's see, let's open it. I'm gonna open it in QuickTime. That's a good still. And then let's open the other one in QuickTime and let's see. 
So this is at 42 seconds and go to 42 seconds. Oh. The years it's getting a lot less. Climate change. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know about you guys. Uh, I I, I kind of have a hard time telling the difference. This looks pretty similar. Um, I know that this might also be garbled through the uh, <laughs> through the wonderful world of Zoom. You might not be seeing what I exactly what I'm seeing, but um, they're pretty dang similar. Okay, yeah, and so, our end, you you can't already tell a difference. Yeah, it's very similar. Um, so and again, that comes back to the idea that I was saying, like 4K. You know, I feel like a lot of times I can tell the difference uh, between 4K and 1080 on, um, like on YouTube, let's say. But, but that's not because <sighs> I'm trying to figure out how to. I'm trying to figure out how to articulate this. Like we shot that footage on really nice cameras with really nice lenses. Okay. And it's in, and we shot it in 4K. Okay. So to shoot it in 4K is a lot different than to shoot it in 1080. If you shoot it in 1080, then it's going to look worse than 4K. Like 4K will have more detail, period. Um, so, you know, but when you, when you, and so when you compress 4K to 1080, you still have quite a bit of detail because that camera, because that sensor, that sensor that was capturing the 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 life. Uh, but if you're shooting on a camera that only shoots 1080 and maybe it's a cheap lens, then it's going to look not as nice, basically. So, um, so there's that. And then, um, oh, we have somebody in the chat. Oh, okay, she left. Um, so last thing really quick, uh, I'll show you, um, I believe there's a way to, uh, in, in VLC player, VLC player, for those who don't know, um, I personally have VLC player as my default. Like when I open, I, I have VLC as my default video player. And that's because it takes like every it just has every, um, it takes every format. <laughs> like if I ever run across, you know, any other format that's like odd or strange or off, you know, the unusual, um, it's, uh, it just, it, it takes it every time. So, uh, let's see here. Let's, so I'm going to, I'm going to, so this is VLC player. I'm going to open, um, oh. Might be giving me some issues like the other ones did. I should close some of my programs. For those who don't know, <laughs> uh, you don't want to overload your computer. Okay, so I think I can choose a file now, final, and I'm just going to choose this one because it's still 3.3 gigs, but it's only five minutes, and I, I I know we're running out of time here. So there's my project, um, and. Let's see, stream output settings. So I think this is really where you can, you can, um, you can use VLC player as a compressor. So I'm gonna change this to MP4 and you can see I can change all these different settings. Um, let's see. So then I think when you just click OK, it just, as you can see, this bar down here, it just exports it. But I'm not quite sure if this is, I don't do this too often. And part of the reason is, um, you know, I use media encoder. And uh, I think maybe what we'll do is we'll cover media encoder when we do, we could do like a whole session on, on Adobe Premiere. Um, okay, so that went to the desktop. Oh no, it's still it's still three three point three gigs. So 
Um, let me see if I can figure this out really quick and convert. There it is. Convert and stream. So you go to file, convert, stream. Then you open your media and you grab your project and you choose a profile. So again, you can choose all these different, um, you don't want audio MP4, you want the video. And let's see, you can customize it so that, I mean, I'm hoping that this compresses. I don't even know that, you might have to like figure out how to, um, I guess like right here, like frame rate, um, you could change the, uh, you could put in 10, 1920 by 1080. You can change the codex there and let's see, save as file, desktop. I don't know if this is, I might have to do some more research on how to use VLC player as a, uh, as an exporter, but um, we've run out of time. That was pretty much uh, the end of the slides anyway. Um, so, uh, you know, if anybody has any questions, of course, I can, um, I'm going to put my email in the chat here. And then also, Adon, what I'll do is I'm going to, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to export this as a PDF and I'm just going to put it in the chat. And, and I think, may, I don't know if you, if you save I think if you like save the recording in certain ways, you might be able to, um, it might be like embedded in the chat, which would be kind of cool. Yeah, so, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, so I'm gonna go here and then from your computer, downloads, video file. So here's the whole slide series with the links and, and then that's going up there and there it is. So that's in the chat. Um, so yeah, um, you know, I'll, uh, I'll think about, uh, you know, maybe we'll do like a, a Adobe premiere, um, and, and I'll include media encoder in that. Um, you know, obviously, you know, if you're, if you're dealing with files that are very large, um, you know, and you're doing it regularly, you probably want premiere and you want an encoder, a uh, media encoder, like something, cause it's, it's a pretty professional program and only every now and then do I run across a file that's like, like it, it doesn't take like MKV or whatever. There's some certain files that it doesn't take, but for the most part, it takes everything. And it's very specific about how you can, you just, you have full control over like the size and the, the file size and the resolution and all that. So um, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Adon. I appreciate it. We'll be in touch. Okay. All right. Thanks Pete. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.